Well, good morning uh, again, St. Luther. Uh, yet again, uh, we are privileged uh, today to be under the umbrella of God's grace and his goodness, for he has yet once again allowed us to see uh, and witness a brand new day, and for that we thank him. Uh, this morning, uh, we are starting a, a new unit in our summer quarter. Uh, this unit one is Jesus Teaches About Faith. Uh, our general lesson title is Do Not Worry. Our adult, young adult topic is No Worries. And our children's topic is Why Worry. Our background scripture is found in Matthew, the sixth chapter, uh, the 19th through the 34th verse. And our print passage is found in Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 25th uh, through the 34th verse. And uh, today's lesson uh, addresses an age old problem of, of worry. And uh, Today's lesson coming from the book of Matthew, you know, we are to acknowledge that these are the very words uh, that proceeded out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. And in today's lesson, he begins after having uh, assembled his uh, disciples to teach them uh, about the life in the kingdom of God. Uh, he talks about how we are to give, uh, how we are to pray, how we are to fast, uh, what we are to treasure in our hearts. And he, he talks about us making a choice as to whom we are going to serve and place our focus on very important word focus uh, and he clearly uh, tells us in the 24th verse of this chapter that no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to one and despise the other he says you cannot serve God and mammon. In essence, wealth, success, prestige, uh, all of these things that uh, so often uh, the world and sometimes even of his very own disciples uh, get misguided by. And so Matthew, who is the writer of our lesson today, uh, like the other disciples, uh, when chosen by Jesus, was busy in his chosen profession as a, as a tax collector. And I can imagine that being asked to put that aside, uh, to follow Jesus would produce a sense of concern or, or worry about how his needs would be met. Thus, uh, Jesus takes this opportunity to teach about not just faith, but faith in him. And when we speak of his disciples, if you consider yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, then you too are disciples. So this, this advice was not just for, for Matthew and his other disciples, it is for us today. And you have to understand that uh, faith is the very foundation upon which the gospel of Jesus Christ is built. And it is uh, our faith that defeats those close cousins called worry and fear. Uh, knowing these concerns, it is here in our, in our lesson print that he begins teaching about worrying and, and losing our focus on who is able to meet all of our needs. And Jesus Christ is certainly more than capable of meeting our needs. 
but all too often we lose sight of him who is able to meet our needs and we feel as though this uh, this matter is for us but it is not and so as we uh, look at the beginning of our our valescent print here uh, he's addressing these daily concerns that sometimes we get so uh, consumed about. And uh, I'm going to uh, read uh, the 25th uh, and the 26th verse. And we'll notice that here, he starts off by saying, therefore, which means that now that you've heard what I've had to say previously, now here is uh, the word of the Lord that I want you uh, to apply to your life. And so he says, Starting with the 25th verse, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Now when we look at this, when it, it speaks that we take no thought, you know, that should be uh, translated as not to be worried or, or anxious for you know, we all give some thought to our, our daily needs. The point is this. If God created you, and we know that he did, then doesn't it make sense that he will provide for your basic needs? You know, all throughout his word, he's, he's promised to take care of us. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's provision. Uh, in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth to the seventh, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. Jesus, he, he, he finally says, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. He says, says, look at the birds. You know, they don't sow. They don't reap. They don't store up. He said, but I feed them. Now, when, when I look at you, see, you being man, you are the, the object of my love. Uh, I created you in my image, in my likeness. You are a little below the angels. So you have a higher position. God has uh, appointed more uh, prestige upon man, his ultimate creation. And so he said, surely, if I take care of the birds and your place is higher, then surely I will take care of you how often it seems that we forget the promises of God or what he's already told us he's going to do. And so he begins to address, you know, what can, what can we accomplish by worry? And so uh, in, our, in our next outline, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and read the 27th uh, through the 32nd, but pay close attention to the 27th verse. And he says, which of you taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And, and why take ye thought for a raiment? And he says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, 
O ye of little faith. Since when has our confidence reigned in the God that has always taken care of us, always met our needs and our issues and our concerns? We would not be here today if it were not for his care and for his provision. And so he, he chastises us a little bit for our lack of faith in the promises of God that he has given us. And so he then says in the 31st verse, therefore take no thought saying what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or wherewithal should you be clothed. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. God created you. He made you. He knows all about you. He knows your needs and your desires and wants. Why is it that uh, our creator would not provide for his creation? And so Jesus is, is telling the disciples and he's telling all of us today uh, that it's, it's pure foolishness to worry because it will not add a single day to the length of your life. We, we worry about uh, our situations. We worry about our health. We worry about our families. We worry about our careers and our, and our jobs. And we spend so much time being consumed. And he says, your worrying will not add any length of days to your life. And so um, he goes on and makes yet again another comparison, the lilies of the field. So as he clothes the lilies of the field for a little while, so shall he clothe you. Now in, in James, the fourth chapter in the, in the 14th verse, it says, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. So he's saying to us, time is indeed short and valuable. Uh, we shouldn't waste it worrying about those things that we cannot control. You see, worrying uh, will not rob tomorrow of his troubles, but instead it will rob you of your health and your strength today. We know that the hospitals and the doctor's offices uh, are full of, of patients who have suffered heart troubles, hypertension, high blood pressure, stress, all these concerns that weigh in and sicken the body. It's, it's, it's a shame that we have allowed our worry, hence lack of faith to, to impact us in such a way that it's as though we have lost our very confidence in our creator. The God that is above all who compares to no one, who is our provider, who is our sustainer. And so we cannot continue to allow our worry to rob us today of our health and our strength. And we need to know that these cares that we have, God has already told us what to do about it. Uh, First Peter, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse, he says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You see, he is our bird bearer. So then, my, my brothers and sisters, what, what are we to do to keep from worrying? He's clearly uh, told us in our next outline. And, and this is what uh, it is that he has charged each and every one of us to do. Uh, reading the 33rd and the 34th verse, most importantly, 
We've heard it before, but we should accept it. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He has clearly stated uh, what our priority should be, what our major concern should be. It should be in seeking his kingdom. And you see, um, it's, it's again, it's, it's not that we are to ignore our life. We are just simply not to be consumed with worry about it. And as we seek God in his kingdom, uh, this is the beginning and the building of our faith. And as a result, it is the beginning to the ending of our worry. We know that faith and worry are exact opposites. And those of us who, who claim him as Lord and Savior are charged not to worry, but to seek him, to cast all our cares upon him. For we are to realize our place within his kingdom only a little lower than the angels. And so, finally, we know that uh, our worry uh, and our fear, we know that these are not the things that come from God, for he has told us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. This is of the enemy. This is the thing to distract us. This is the thing to get our focus off of what he has charged us to do, which is to seek his kingdom. But instead, we focus on the things. We focus on the wants. We focus on all those things that he's already told us he would provide for. But if we would seek him first, and first means first. It doesn't mean second or third. It doesn't mean when I find time. It doesn't mean when I get off work. It means first. That's our priority. And so finally, um, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 18th verse. And it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, meaning temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, it is our faith in God that will lead and guide us to a life that is eternal. And he has, he has charged us that we are not to be anxious about life. Instead, we are to establish our primary purpose for living, which is the expansion and the promotion of the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. His purpose is that the world might be saved and know the true and living God, and that all men and women might come to the knowledge of salvation in him. And so, brothers and sisters, this is our charge, that we seek the kingdom of God through the studying of his holy word. And that is the only way that we can build our faith. And as we build our faith, we, in essence, demolish the worry that trips us up the worry that carries our focus off of he who is able to keep us. So we charge you today to do as the word of God has instructed us to do. It was given uh, for our benefit. 
It is given that we know the purpose for which we are called, just as he called those 12. He's called you, and he's called you to seek him, that in seeking him and in strengthening our faith, we may let a dark world know about the light that is in Jesus Christ. And how can they come out of darkness unless someone shines a light? And this is what's missing today. And this is what we must do if the kingdom of God is to be edified and he has charged us to do it. For we have no need of worrying about uh, the things of life, what we'll eat, what we will drink, or what we will wear. For our life is more than that. And our focus should be on the things that are not temporary, but on the things that are eternal. And that is the kingdom of God. So once again, uh, we thank you today for listening to us. And we pray that you will continue to be blessed and keep your eyes and your focus on he who is able to keep us. Let the church say, amen.